Welcome back to the channel, my name's Shan. So on the 12th of February I put out a video looking in detail at my potential export and what might work best for us in terms of our export payments. And it's sods law that Octopus Energy put out a new tariff called Octopus Flux a couple of days later, which is an import and export tariff and is specifically for solar and battery owners. So in this video I'm going to have a look at this new tariff and its rates, the conditions that need to be met to sign up and whether the numbers suggest that this is the best option for those of us with solar and battery systems. At first glance it looks like a really good tariff uh, but there are a few things to consider before you sign up. I'll run the numbers for my current tariff which is Octopus Go and compare this with Octopus Flux on a new spreadsheet I put together and this will help us generate some meaningful figures for import costs, export payments, total savings for the year, accounting for seasonal solar generation and self-consumption. And if you find it useful, I'll tell you how you can use it to work out your own numbers too. Sound good? Let's jump into it. Okay, so it's very clear that Octopus Energy have kept their ear to the ground and the increasing calls for a specific solar and battery storage tariff. In particular, it's been on every solar and battery storage owner's wish list who doesn't have an electric vehicle because of course they couldn't access the popular off-peak smart tariffs like Octopus Go and Intelligent and the late Octopus Go Faster. If you click on the link in the video description, it'll take you to this Octopus Flux sign-up page. As we said before, it's a tariff for solar and battery owners and actually covers both your import and export in one option. Scroll down here and pop your postcode in and it'll bring up your region specific rates. We're in the northeast of England, so these are ours. You can see that there are three different rates for the import and export elements of this tariff. It's worth noting that this is a flexible tariff and this means that the unit rate and standing charges can rise and fall with wholesale energy prices. And as with all of Octopus Energy's tariffs, there are no exit fees. So during the day we'd be paying 31.87p per kilowatt hour. First off, that's a really good day rate, given that we're currently paying 40.6p per kilowatt hour on Octopus Go. But in reality, we use very little peak rate electricity. In fact, it's only around half a kilowatt hour per day using our solar and battery. Export during the day is a guaranteed 21.91p per kilowatt hour, which is really good compared to the previous offerings of the SEG at 4.1p. Outgoing fixed at 15p and outgoing agile which is variable and averages around 20p per kilowatt hour in the last 365 days, excluding 4 to 7pm. The cheaper off-peak rates on flux is between 2am and 5am and is 19.12p per kilowatt hour, which is quite a bit higher than the 12p per kilowatt hour off-peak rate with Octopus Go. The export rate between 2am and 5am is 8.53 per kilowatt hour, but it strikes me as being completely pointless. I'm not sure why you'd ever discharge at that rate, or maybe I'm missing something. Let me know in the comment section below. The peak rate between 4 and 7pm is where it gets interesting. Import goes up to 44.62p per kilowatt hour and export follows suit at 35.3p per kilowatt hour. The standing charge for this tariff is 48.29p per day. This is pretty much on par with my current Octopus Go standing charge of 48.38p per day. So now we've seen what it is, who's eligible to join Octopus Flux and what are the terms and conditions of it? To join you'll need a smart meter to provide half hourly data, solar panels and a home battery system, a copy of the MCS documentation and confirmation your district network operator or DNO has been notified of the installation. Octopus do not cap the export rate and as we said before it can go up and down. What's more the total energy you can export per month isn't limited. And unlike Octopus Go or Intelligent you are eligible for Octopus Flux whether you have an electric vehicle or not. If you like us and receive fit generation and deemed export payments then your fit generation payments will stay the same either with your current fit provider or you can choose to move this to Octopus but you don't have to. However, in order to receive Octopus Flux payments, you will need to permanently opt out of the deemed export payments as you can't be paid for the same export twice. Instead, you'll receive the Octopus Flux export rate, which as mentioned before varies depending on your location, for every kilowatt hour exported, as measured by your smart meter. You'll need to think about whether this is worth it for you based on your numbers, and be aware of the risks of doing this. If you're thinking about giving up your FIT deemed export payment, make sure you check out this video in the top right hand corner before you do to help you work out your figures and the risks. But what might the export payment numbers look like? And is it worth joining? 
By the way, if you're finding this video useful, then please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for free. It really helps the channel out with the all important YouTube algorithm, so thank you. In fact, I'm going to take it a bit further and look at both the import and export annual costs and savings of Octopus Flux compared to my current tariff for Octopus Go to see if the numbers stack up. After all, Octopus Flux is both an import and export tariff. Now, this might look a bit daunting at first, but a lot of these numbers will be calculated for you. And I'll go through which cells you need to enter what figures into. This is the starting point at the top left of the spreadsheet. Some basic information about your electricity consumption. If like me, you're on a time of use tariff like Octopus Go, you can put in your peak and off peak consumption data. If you're on a fixed rate, simply insert the same rate into both cells. Or if you're on a half hourly variable tariff, then the average price per kilowatt hour you pay for electricity. You can find historical peak and off peak electricity consumption data from your energy provider's online account. Just to note, these are my consumption figures before we had solar and a battery installed. But don't worry, the spreadsheet will take this into account as we go on and it will make sense why I've done it this way. It might seem a bit cumbersome finding the electricity consumption data to input in the spreadsheet, but you'll be familiar with the concept of garbage in, garbage out. Accurate figures entered now will result in more accurate and therefore more useful results for which you can base your decision on. Moving over to the top right of the spreadsheet. This section relates to the average daily solar generation of your solar array. If you don't currently have the generation data for your solar panels, you can simply input the kilowatt potential of the system here. The spreadsheet will then automatically calculate the estimated generation per quarter based on my South South West Solar Ray's 7 year average annual figures to get you started. If you already have your solar generation figures that's brilliant and you can override this and input the data into the Q1 to Q4 cells yourself. If you don't want to use my quarter generation and don't have your own, you can click on the help button here which will take you to this page and should help you work out some figures after inputting a few details. You can enter your usable battery capacity here. Ours is at 8.2 kilowatt hour give energy battery. Moving down the spreadsheet, you can add your percentage solar self consumption to your home figure here. This does not include solar generation into the battery as this will be accounted for later. The next section on both sides relates to the import and export tariff rates per quarter. So for me, I want to compare our current setup which is Octopus Go throughout the year with a hybrid system of Go and Octopus Flux. But you can add in any tariff rates for any supplier you wish. And if you're thinking of joining Octopus Energy, don't forget our offer of an extra £20 from us on top of the £50 credit you get from Octopus Energy when you sign up via the link in the video description box below, or by clicking on this text here in the spreadsheet. We're in the northeast of England, and so on Octopus Go during peak times, we pay 40.6p per kilowatt hour, and off peak 12p per kilowatt hour. Whilst on Octopus Go, the only option I have for export payments would be via the SEG at 4.1p per kilowatt hour. This is to stop people buying in cheaper off-peak electricity, storing it in the battery and then selling it back to the grid at a higher rate. After entering all these figures, you can see that the spreadsheet self-populates your peak, off-peak and total daily costs without solar and battery storage. Below this, it will now generate the peak, off-peak and total daily costs, quarterly cost, daily saving quarterly saving and quarterly export with your solar and battery setup taken into account. Probably most useful here and will take into account all the figures above is the total year import costs, total year export costs and total year savings. You can also add your solar and battery installation cost here which will allow the spreadsheet to generate a payback in years and return on investment or ROI figures here. Okay, that's great, but what does Octopus Flux look like? So I'm just going to do exactly the same things as we did on the left, on the right. In my head, I think Octopus Go in Q1 and Q4, and then Octopus Flux in Q2 and Q3 is the way to go. Let's see if the numbers agree. So 40.6p peak and 12p off peak in Q1 and Q4 for Octopus Go, and 31.87p peak and 19.12p off peak for Octopus Flux. 4.1p per kilowatt hour export whilst on Octopus Go. With Octopus Flux, the day export rate will be 21.91p per kilowatt hour up until 4pm. After 4pm, a peak export rate of 35.3p per kilowatt hour could be achieved until 7pm. There is the option to force export some of the energy in my battery back to the grid between 4 and 7pm, but we would need to leave enough energy in the battery to get from 7pm to either the flux rate of 19.12p per kilowatt hour 
when that kicks in in the early hours of the morning or till we start generating the next day. However, knowing that there are a finite number of cycles for the battery and that repetitive cycling could possibly wear it out more quickly, I'm not sure I'll force discharge the battery as tempting as it is. There's also the risk of exporting too much electricity from the battery and not having enough for our own consumption and then needing to import electricity at a higher peak rate. I suspect we won't be exporting huge amounts of solar between 4 and 7 p.m but there will certainly be some going back to the grid and therefore in my opinion a reasonable estimated average export rate of 24p per kilowatt hour could be achieved. Adding these figures completes the data and again the boxes self-generate below. You can now compare Tariff 1 Octopus Go with Tariff 2 the hybrid Octopus Go Flux Tariff we've created. As I suspected, moving to Octopus Flux for Q2 and Q3 appears to be the better option for us, with an improved total year saving. Just to clarify, the total year saving is calculated by adding the savings with solar, battery and export payments, minus the total import costs of the electricity. The Octopus Go and Flux model with their export payments definitely seems to be the better option financially. Specifically it's £753.43 more per year, a massive 5 year quicker payback and an approximately 7% higher ROI compared to sticking with Octopus Go and the SEG throughout the year. It's interesting and you'll notice that the pure Octopus Go tariff actually costs us around the same in electricity if not slightly more compared to the hybrid Go flux model. The majority of the total year savings therefore come from the total year export payments. Ok, how about Octopus Flux as the complete solution all year round? Remember those figures. In fact, scrap that, my memory's shocking. I've discounted staying on Octopus Go all year round, so let's move this hybrid system over to the left for both the import and export figures. Now add 31.87p peak and 19.12p off peak for all quarters on the right. I suspect we'll be exporting very very little, if anything between 4 to 7 p.m. during Q1 and Q4, so I'm going to leave it at the day export rate of 21.91p per kilowatt hour. Okay, that's interesting, so it looks like the Octopus Go Flux hybrid system still comes out on top compared to pure Octopus Flux all year round, but there's less in it than before. A difference of £175.10 in savings, 0.7 years earlier payback and a 1.67% increase in ROI. Ok so I hope that was useful, it certainly was for me in seeing the numbers laid out. I know I've only compared a couple of tariffs and there are several tariff options which may work for you that have different eligibility criteria. However it would have been a very long and boring video to run through all of those options. I would stress that your consumption, generation and battery storage numbers will be different from mine and feel free to download the spreadsheet via the link in the video description box below. You can then play around with the numbers and get your head around the spreadsheet generated figures before deciding which tariff will give you the best return for your solar and battery system. So after working through the numbers you're probably wondering what I'm going to do. Octopus Flux is certainly an excellent combined import and export tariff for those who have solar and a battery, however I don't think it's the complete solution for me. I think it works better for those who don't have an electric vehicle as those that do will certainly miss those cheaper off-peak rates that the likes of Octopus Go and Octopus Intelligent bring to the table. Especially if you're not able to charge via solar during the day or you do a lot of miles and therefore need to charge more often. Personally I'm going to wait until the 1st of April to join Octopus Flux when my solar generation will comfortably outstrip what we need for the house and battery. And given that I'm recording this on the 9th of March and it currently looks like this outside. And as we've seen it really comes into its own in the summer with those export payments. This will also tie nicely into when my last fit deemed export payment will be made. Just a note with most of Octopus Energy's smart tariffs you can leave at any time without any exit fees but you cannot switch back to that same tariff within 30 days, which is pretty fair. So just to be clear there is currently no minimum fixed length you need to sign up to Octopus Flux for. I suspect I will end up going back to Octopus Go around September October time based on my spreadsheet findings unless my consumption figures change significantly and of course I'll let you know how we get on and if you're subscribed to the channel you'll be notified when this video lands. And don't forget our offer of an extra £20 referral reward on top of Octopus Energy's £50 if you're planning on switching to Octopus Energy. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments section below your thoughts on Octopus Flux. Have you been thinking about switching? If so, when are you going to do this and what do your savings look like over the year? And if you enjoyed this video, I think you'll enjoy this video too and I'll catch you there.
Thanks for watching. See you next time.